welcome back to Wanda to Wayne's World. We talk about so many different topics and so many important topics. And earlier we spoke about chiropractic. Now we're going to talk about something that affects a lot, a lot of people, which is sinuses, allergy. And with me is Dr. Daniel Gantz, MD. Okay, and you're an ENT. Correct. Look, I got that right, guys. It's hard. I got to put that through my mind, but I get it right, even at this age. All right, ENT. Ears, nose, throat. Right. <coughs> Has the landscape, how long are you practicing? I've been practicing uh, uh, about the last six years here at Boca Raton. Okay. Has the landscape of that industry changed in what you can do and what you're allowed to do? Definitely. Uh, when I was doing my training, uh, we were just starting to, to incorporate minimally invasive techniques into the treatment of, uh, of uh, nose and sinus problems. Okay, we, we used the first what we call uh, minimally invasive uh, balloon dilation of the sinuses, which allows us to dilate the openings of the sinuses, much like the way that a, a cardiologist uh, opens the you know, the, you know, diseased blood vessels with balloon angioplasty. So let's just explain that for one second. Mm -hmm. So basically you put this thing in and where it narrows down, mm -hmm. you pump it up and separate it. Right. And where it used to be, we used to, in terms of sinus Sinus surgeries, we used to only have the option of removing large amounts of uh, bone and tissue to, to help people with sinus problems. Uh, but this was taking a more minimally invasive approach where we're now able to go into the sinus, the natural opening of the sinus, uh, just with a little catheter, dilate the balloon less than a quarter of an inch, and, and get results, uh, excellent results, which basically gives our, makes our patients feel much better. And also, uh, the downtime and, and recovery is it's much, much less. And now we're actually able to do this uh, in the comfort of our office uh, in, in, for, for, our, for the last three to four years. Okay, so you're sticking this thing in my nose, my throat, wherever. Mm -hmm. Is it uncomfortable? Well, most of the time we spend giving you, giving you medication to make you, to make you calm, okay. relaxed, numbing you up. And so then, you don't put me under. Right, you don't, you're not all under. All local. All under local. Right? Okay, you're cool. a little sleepy, a little groggy, but... But, uh, but South Florida, you, you, you do great. Right, right? <laughs> <laughs> this is the way everybody is here. Right. All right, so local anesthesia mm. and great results. Right. So explain to me and everybody, <coughs> I have a sinus issue. What does that mean? What does that mean? There, there, there are, you know, sinus issues, uh, chronic sinusitis is, is one of the most uh, 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 debilitating conditions in this country. There, there are very, I have patients who tell me I have... I have a bad heart, I have, I have really some serious problems, but what really bothers me is my sinus <laughs> problems. Because it becomes a breathing issue? It becomes an issue of breathing, smelling, pressure, headaches, pain, uh, drainage out of the nose, frequent sinus infections, missing work, just feeling fatigued and just not feeling, feeling your best. And is that caused by the sinuses closing up? Uh, it can be due to a variety of things. It can be caused by the sinuses, uh, a little narrowing of where the sinuses drain into the nose. They, they, uh, uh, they do narrow, and, that, and uh, bacteria then start uh, taking over inside the sinuses and can cause swelling and pus uh, and make it more difficult for you to breathe. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. <clears throat> I now find that I get pressure here, mm -hmm. okay? I'm just going from th common sense things that people tell me. Right. So I decide I call you, right? Would that be, right. this would be a place where I would call you. Right. Okay. What's the first step when I come in? Is it like x-rays? I mean, what, well, what is first it? First thing first is, uh, is, is me listening to you and seeing okay. what exactly is that's bothering you. Okay. Uh, listening to your symptoms. Then uh, I take a look inside, inside your nose uh, and I'm your nose and throat. So I look in your mouth and your ears and your neck too, uh, just to get the complete picture. Uh, and then usually if you have, if, if sort of conservative treatments, fail, like kind of nose sprays and allergy medications, then we'll consider getting a CAT scan in your sinuses, possibly testing you for allergies, uh, and uh, and based on what we see on, on the CAT scan and the allergy test, uh, that may lead to the next step of treatment, which could include balloon sinuplasty, removal of polyps, reduction of turbinates, all things that help with, with, with nasal congestion and sinus problems. Okay. <coughs> you mentioned a key word here, allergies. Mm -hmm. um, Sinuses, allergies, do they work hand in hand? Is it totally different? Sinus and allergies do work hand in hand. They're associated, which means that we find where we find people that have allergies, we tend to find more people that have 
uh, uh, sin chronic sinusitis too. They're people that have one without having the other, but they're definitely associated. And usually the best treatment we get is when we, when we look at, we target both things together, both the allergies and the sinus problems. It's kind of, kind of two approaches to tackling a similar problem. Both allergies and sinusitis can give you symptoms that uh, appear very similar, uh, and in treating both of them when, when somebody has both of the, the issues will usually give us our best results. And I told you I wasn't going to ask you a technical question, but I have to ask okay. you this anyway. All right. <coughs> what part of your system mm -hmm. drains the liquid from your facial area? And the reason I asked that is because many, many years ago, I was in a car accident. Mm. And I was in the back seat, sitting between two seats, and we had a car accident, and my face smashed into the seat. Mm. All of a sudden, one day, my eye swelled up a little bit, and then it went away. And then this swelled up a little bit, and then it went away. And then my lips swelled up a little bit, and went away. And then this side. And then my face swelled up out to here, and I looked like the elephant boy. Mm. Okay? And... I went to the hospital, and the first thing they do is uh, give you better drills, give you stuff like that, okay? Mm -hmm. And this happened for months, and it would go down by itself. And I'm guessing it was moisture building up in my face. When I finally went to an ENT, mm -hmm. he, I'm not a doctor guy, so when I say this, I could sound like an idiot, but he said the lymphatic system in your face was mm -hmm. thrown off, and you, it wasn't draining properly. And I don't remember what he did, because it goes back a number of years, but he fixed the problem. 99.9%. .9%. Every so often, my lip will still swell up just a teeny little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's liquid. It's, you can tell it's liquid. What would cause something like that? Well, the lymphatic system is a system of uh, sort of drainage of infection uh, in, in the whole body. And so when you have an infection, that infection, uh, you know, part, you know, particles of the, uh, let's say, the uh, bacteria that your body is fighting then travel via the lymphatic system to lymph nodes and the lymph nodes then start fighting the infection and producing antibodies and so on. So they're little tiny channels, they're kind of like veins, uh, but they don't, they don't carry blood, they carry lymphatic tissue, lymph. Uh, and uh, just like anything, they could get blocked up. So instead of the, the, the tissue sort of draining out through the lymph channels, you may get a blockage, maybe, maybe the trauma caused a a blockage there, or you had just uh, just from birth, or just a natural narrowing of your lymphatic system. It never happened until mm -hmm. I was forty something years old. Mm -hmm. so or the swelling from the, from the trauma of the accident could block off the lymph system, and that swelling, which normally would go down on its own, could have been you know blocked. Uh, it was really scary, and I'm mm -hmm. sad that I never took pictures of it because I look like the elephant boy, and it'd be great to use on my show. <laughs> when you do a talk show, you get to do all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, <coughs> so. We're running out of time. When does someone call you? What are symptoms that would make someone want to call you? Uh, well, if you're having you know, facial pressure, congestion, uh, uh, just feeling just not, not your greatest, having difficulty uh, with breathing, having difficulty smelling, uh, pressure, having frequent sinus infections, uh, or even just regular allergy symptoms, that's the time to call. Uh, we have a lot, of, a lot of ways that we treat that. We start off with the, with the most minimally invasive techniques first, including allergy treatment and nose sprays and so on and if that's not help, that's not that's not doing the, the job we have instead of uh, we have a great next step that we can do in the office uh, under local anesthesia and one thing that I'm now doing in my office is using image guidance which is actually like a GPS system for uh, for the sinuses where we actually can uh, using your cat scan that we take in the office uh, uh, track all the instruments we use, the, the catheter with the balloon going into your natural sinuses, we actually track it on the, on the CAT scan and we see precisely where it is to make the procedure that much, uh, that much safer, that much more effective, and that much that's simpler and, and easier for, for the patients. And for the doctors, I'm sure. It must be a really good feel to know in exactly. real time where you're at with this instrument. Right. Where, I guess in the past, you were kind of just guessing. And right. We were using our best knowledge of anatomy, and I, we had other ways that were lights, and they, they were helpful. But in terms of the precision, uh, the precision of using the actual CAT scan, there's no, you know, there's no equal to that. And it used to be something uh, that was only done in, in the operating room for really complicated neurosurgical and, and sinus cases. But now we can do it in the comfort of my office. Great. How do people get in touch with you? 
uh, give us a call. Our, our number is 561-391-3333, or you can visit us on, on the web at danielgantz, G-A-N-C, M-D.com. With that, everybody, you know, there's no reason for you to have to live with issues when there are things that you can do. And you know me, I'm not a big proponent for the Band-Aid, the, the medicine, the pill. Sometimes you just got to take that step to put your body back in balance, okay, to get it to do the things it normally is supposed to do. With that, everybody, have a great night. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Doc. Thanks.